okay so this gets us to the next question that is question 97 this gets us to the next one that is question 97 let us have a look at the question first hemophilia a, a has the following hemophilia a that you very well know is because of reduced factor 8 either reduced or because of antibodies against factor 8 so factor 8 is reduced fair enough second option ptt is increased this is not pit ptt pttk that looks at the intrinsic pathway which involves factor 8 so ptt is increased agreed increased pt no this is wrong normal ble bleeding time that's fair enough so question 97 the answer is c that is increased pt the answer is c that is increased pt i need not even write this the normal coagulation pathways the normal coagulation pathways there are two coagulation pathways that is the intrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway intrinsic and the extrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway this is factor 12 11 9 8 which in turn goes to factor 10 please note i am writing it numerically 12 9 11 but it is always written arabically just to make it easy i am writing it this way which goes to factor 10 10 to 10 a that is the common pathway versus extrinsic pathway which is associated with activation of tissue factor along with factor 7 along with factor 7 which then goes to the common pathway 10 to 10 a this converts fibrinogen to fibrin uh, let's first write let's say it properly it first converts prothrombin to thrombin prothrombin to thrombin which in turn converts fibrinogen to fibrin prothrombin to thrombin which in turn converts fibrinogen to fibrin which in turn converts fibrinogen to fibrin this is the coagulation pathways so first point first point fact uh, hemophilia is deficient hemophilia is deficiency of factor 8 we look at the intrinsic pathway by pt by pttk partial thromboplastin time with kyolin and we look at the extrinsic pathway by evaluation of pt prothrombin time if factor 8 is abnormal pttk would be increased whereas prothrombin time would be normal prothrombin time would be normal nothing to explain in this that was easy it was easy increased pt that will not be seen this gets us to the next question that is question 98 this gets us to question number 98 so aml with worse prognosis is monozomy 7 monozomy 7 question 98 the answer is d that is monozomy 7 first point unfortunately this is a factual point and has to be remembered repeatedly asked now let us make aml let us divide this on the basis of prognosis into good prognosis and poor prognosis let us divide aml acute myeloid leukemia into good prognosis and poor prognosis the good prognostic markers are translocation 821 translocation 1517 and inversion 16 these are the good prognostic markers versus poor prognosis versus poor prognosis which is monosomy 7 which is monosomy 7 translocation 69 translocation 922 inversion 3 translocation 69922 inversion 3 if you wish you can add one more monosomy 7 we have already written 
another poor prognosis is monosomy 5 monosomy 5 and complex karyotype complex karyotype the lower two they are optional but the first flow first flow four need to be remembered need to be remembered this is good versus poor prognosis in AML in AML so monosomy 7 is associated with the poor prognosis next this gets us to the next question that is question 99 <coughs> this gets us to the next one massive splenomegaly with pancytopenia is seen in myelofibrosis it is seen in myelofibrosis massive splenomegaly with pancytopenia so before we go further before we go further let us have a look at the diseases associated with this first point first point Achha, before going further let us look at the other options also so that it becomes easier for you CLL and CML they are of course not associated with pancytopenia in them the TLC is elevated so they also have splenomegaly but TLC is elevated pure red cell aplasia red cells are reduced it is only associated with abnormalities of erythroid series low hemoglobin but not pancytopenia not pancytopenia so the answer by default was myelofibrosis next point other diseases other diseases associated with other diseases associated with pancytopenia associated with pancytopenia with splenomegaly other diseases associated with pancytopenia with splenomegaly they are first of course was myelofibrosis first of course was myelofibrosis others are hairy cell leukemia hairy cell leukemia remember when we discussed this in detail yesterday we then also saw that hairy cell has pancytopenia with splenomegaly in absence of lymphadenopathy hairy cell leukemia next malaria malaria kalazar kalazar is leishmaniasis malaria kalazar that is leishmaniasis next thalassemia major thal major these are the causes of pancytopenia with splenomegaly done next this gets us this gets us to the next question that is question 100 just a sec let me get it back this gets us to the next question that is question 100 question number 100 let us have a look at the question first chronic smoker is diagnosed to have a mass in his bronchus so most commonly it is carcinoma small cell carcinoma mass is resected which of the following markers would be, be used to make a diagnosis carcinomas are cytokeratin positive so question 100 the answer is a that is cytokeratins the answer is a that is cytokeratin so before we go further let us make a table of the markers with the tumor associated cytokeratins cytokeratins they are positive in carcinomas they are positive in carcinomas versus vimentin which is positive in sarcomas versus fimentin which is positive in sarcomas next point cd45 also called as leukocyte common antigen lca leukocyte common antigen it is positive in lymphomas cd45 or leukocyte common antigen next gfap gfap stands for glial fibrillary acidic protein gfap glial fibrillary acidic protein which is positive in gliomas gfap 
which is positive in gliomas next next desmin desmin it is seen in rhabdomyosarcoma desmin rhabdomyosarcoma these are the markers next let me melanomas next melanomas melanomas they are positive for s100 melanomas they are positive for s100 and hmb 45 s100 and hmb 45 which is more specific for melanomas hmb 45 this is more specific why this tells you that s100 other than melanomas is also seen in other conditions that is it is also positive in langerhan cell histiocytosis it is also positive in langerhan cell histiocytosis done this takes care of cytokeratins carcinomas and question 100 this gets us to the next one that is question 101 this gets us to the next one that is 101 renal biopsy with progressive renal failure for three years shows glomerular and vascular deposition of pink amorphous material apple green birefringe is under polarized light with congo red so this is amyloidosis the statement that apple green with congo red makes it amyloidosis these deposits they are positive for lambda light chains so person is most likely suffering from this is al um, amyloid light chain that is multiple myeloma question 101 the answer is d that is multiple myeloma <coughs> multiple myeloma so primary amyloidosis primary amyloidosis the the questionnaire the examiner had given you enough options or enough clues congo red apple green birefringes amyloid amyloid light chain primary amyloidosis al multiple myeloma i guess no explanation is needed in this case we have already seen the various amyloidosis with the proteins associated next this gets us to the next question that is question 102 now have a look at this 15 male hematuria deafness corneal dystrophy so there is ear problems eye problems kidney hematuria renal biopsy shows tubular epithelial with foam cells electron microscopy splitting and lamination of lamina densa extremely important splitting of lamina densa is the diagnostic hallmark of alport's syndrome so the answer is d that is alport's syndrome the answer is d that is alport's syndrome let us have a look at this in slight detail first point alport's it is let's start with the disease it is a mutation in mutation in alpha 5 chain of the glomerular basement membrane alports mutation in alpha 5 chain of the gbm next point next point the name tells you everything alport come to the port so in older times when the sailors used to dock at the port the sailor's girlfriend used to carry food for the sailor she'll carry it in a basket so the diagnostic hallmark the diagnostic hallmark of alports is basket weave appearance <coughs> the diagnostic hallmark just a sec the diagnostic hallmark of alports is basket weave appearance which is arising because of splitting of lamina densa just a sec let me restart it no it, it has started it has started so the diagnostic hallmark the diagnostic hallmark of alports is 
basket weave appearance basket weave appearance all of us have seen baskets they have alternating thick and thin areas they have alternating thick and thin areas arising because of splitting of lamina densa extremely important arising because of the splitting of lamina densa this was what was asked splitting of lamina densa alport's syndrome next point clinical features they were all mentioned in the question itself clinical features the most common clinical feature is sensory neural hearing loss most common sensory neural hearing loss seen in about 60% of the patients seen in about 60% of the patients other manifestations are bilateral anterior lenticonus bilateral anterior lenticonus and recurrent corneal erosions bilateral anterior lenticonus and recurrent corneal erosions we are studying it in kidney so the first manifestation is microscopic hematuria the first manifestation is microscopic hematuria all the clinical features they were already mentioned last point most common inheritance pattern please put a double star on this again repeatedly asked most common inheritance pattern in alports is x linked dominant inheritance it is x linked dominant in nature done so this finishes alports so splitting of the lamina densa alports please differentiate it from splitting of basement membrane which in turn gives it the tram track or the double contour appearance tram track or the double contour appearance which is seen in mpgn membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis so look at the question properly splitting of basement membrane is mpgn versus splitting of lamina densa which is alport's syndrome done done this takes care of that okay
Okay, so this gets us to the next question that is question 103. This gets us to the next question that is question number 103. Linitis, let us have a look at the question. Linitis plastica is found in all except it is found in syphilis sarcoid and carcinomas leomyosarcoma. First point the answer is D that is leomyosarcoma. The answer is D that is leomyosarcoma. Linitis plastica it is found in all except leomyosarcoma. First point what do we mean by this? Meaning, what is linitis plastica? Linitis plastica, it is the appearance of stomach. It is the appearance of stomach in case of appearance of stomach in case of large areas of tumor infiltration. In case of large areas of tumor infiltration as a result of which as a, this large area of tumor infiltration in the stomach as a result of which there is diffuse rugal flattening as a result there is diffuse rugal flattening and rigid thickened wall and a rigid thickened wall the rugae they are flattened and the wall is thickened because of large areas of tumor infiltration which in turn gives it a leather bottle appearance which in turn gives it a leather bottle appearance this is what we mean by linitis plastica next point next point causes or diseases associated causes of linitis plastica it is associated with gastric adenocarcinomas linitis plastica it is associated with gastric adenocarcinomas gastric adenocarcinomas next next lymphomas next lymphomas though in cases of lymphomas the it is less rigid in nature Next, metastasis. Metastasis that is from breast and lungs. Metastasis. Next, inflammatory conditions. It is also associated with inflammatory conditions. Which inflammatory conditions? That is, that is eosinophilic enteritis. Eosinophilic enteritis radiotherapy induced eosinophilic enteritis radiotherapy induced next granulomatous diseases granulomatous diseases which are tb crohn's disease tb crohn's disease sarcoidosis and syphilis sarcoidosis and syphilis the granulomatous diseases Next, it is also associated with amyloidosis. Also associated with amyloidosis. <coughs> These are the diseases <coughs> associated with linitis plastica. <coughs> Done. We have already seen what we mean by linitis plastica. Next, this gets us to the next question that is question 104 this gets us to the next one that is question 104 histological features of celiac disease they include all except increase in thickness of the mucosa see crypt hyperplasia increase in intraepithelial lymphocytes and inflammatory cells in lamina propria is seen so starting with celiac disease firstly the answer the answer is b in celiac disease the answer is B that is increase in thickness of mucosa this is not seen 
so starting with celiac disease celiac disease this is gluten sensitive enteropathy celiac disease this is gluten sensitive enteropathy first point first point it is gluten sensitive enteropathy so what do we see in the microscopy of celiac disease microscopically celiac disease see this is normal villi crypts villi crypts this is normal celiac disease it is associated with flattening of villi with crypt hyperplasia it has gotten flattened from the top hyperplastic from the bottom that is flattening of villi flattening of villi with crypt hyperplasia flattening of villi with crypt hyperplasia as a result the total thickness of mucosa is maintained as a result the total thickness of mucosa is maintained this was one of the options it is not increased total thickness of mucosa is maintained this is celiac disease this is celiac disease obviously it is also associated with increase in inflammatory cells it microscopically it is also associated in associated with increase in intra epithelial lymphocytes increase in intra epithelial lymphocytes and increase in inflammation increase in inflammatory cells in lamina propria that's okay so the problem in the statement was total thickness of the mucosa is maintained this is question 104 that is celiac disease next this gets us to the next question that is question 105 this gets us to the next one that is question 105 pathological findings of chronic alcoholism include all except c ballooning degeneration is seen it is a non specific change which is seen microvesicular fatty change as well as central hyaline sclerosis is seen what is not associated with alcohol intake is piecemeal necrosis this is a factual question which needs to be remembered piecemeal necrosis piecemeal necrosis is not associated with alcoholic liver disease first point next point you very well know what is piecemeal necrosis we have already discussed this piecemeal necrosis it is necrosis of the limiting plate what is limiting plate the first layer of hepatocytes around the portal tract is called as limiting plate so let us see two three points with respect to alcoholic liver disease you very well know alcoholic liver disease it has three stages stage 1 that is fatty liver disease or steatosis stage 1 that is fatty liver disease or steatosis stage 2 that is steato hepatitis stage 2 that is steato hepatitis and stage 3 that is cirrhosis what is the name of cirrhosis associated with alcohol lenac cirrhosis lenac cirrhosis next point coming to the most important feature microscopically microscopically i'm not going to tell you that alcohol it can be associated with both micro and macrovesicular steatosis steatosis then cirrhosis is seen fibrotic septal tracts that you know what i'm very much interested is stage 2 that is steato hepatitis is associated with the presence of malrehaline bodies extremely important extremely important so let us see what do we mean by malary helline bodies malary helline bodies they are also called as malary dank bodies 
they are also called as mallory tank bodies what are they they are intermediate filaments they are intermediate filaments of cytokeratins 8 and 18 complexed with ubiquitin they are intermediate filaments kiske of cytokeratins 8 and 18 complexed with ubiquitin next point they are seen in various conditions one of them is alcoholic liver disease please note you i'm sure you know the diseases in which mallory line bodies are seen another point to be noted is mallory line bodies they are absent in absent in lenac cirrhosis this point is important the list of diseases associated with mallory line everybody knows that but what is important is in which they are absent they are absent in lenac cirrhosis so they are present in stage 2 but are absent in lenac cirrhosis done done this gets us <coughs> this gets us to the next question that is question number 106 <coughs> this gets us to the next one that is question 106 schiller dual bodies they are seen in endodermal sinus tumors yesterday when we made the list of the various bodies we already saw that ovary had two bodies endodermal sinus tumors ovary has two bodies call external bodies call external bodies let us have a look at them <coughs> call external bodies which are seen in york sac tumor call i am so sorry call external bodies which are seen in granulosa cell tumor seen in granulosa cell tumor and schiller dual bodies and schiller dual bodies which are seen in york sac tumor schiller dual bodies seen in york sac tumor also called as endodermal sinus tumors also called as endodermal sinus tumors these are the two bodies which are seen in ovaries starting with call external bodies let us have a look at what they look like microscopically starting with call external bodies what you see in this are large areas with eosinophilic centers large areas with eosinophilic centers eosinophilic areas with presence of tumor cells all around this is a call exner body this looks like a primitive telephone pick the receiver this looks like a primitive telephone that is you pick the receiver and dial from this is the receiver and you dial from the center call external body this is easier to recognize the minute it is not call external body in ovaries make it as schiller dual so what we see in schiller dual bodies is a central blood vessel how do i know it's a blood vessel because it has rbcs in the lumen with an outer layer of cuboidal cells <coughs> central blood vessel with an outer layer of cuboidal cells with a outer papilla again having cuboidal cells so this is much tougher to recognize though this is a schiller dual body keep it simple if it's not call exner it is schiller dual next point this is what they look like microscopically starting with the first one that is a call exner body what we have here is a call exner body this is we have already seen pick the receiver and dial from the center with presence of tumor cells all around seen in granulosa cell tumor next is a schiller dual body next is a schiller dual body 
which shows the presence of a central blood vessel with an outer layer of cuboidal cells. How do I know it is a blood vessel? It has RBCs in the lumen. Blood vessel with an outer papilla, with an outer papilla again having cuboidal cells, again having cuboidal cells. This is a Schiller dual body seen in yolk sac tumors or endodermal sinus tumors. Done. Done. This gets us to the next question that is question number 107. Question 107. Semoma bodies, they are seen in all except we have already made the list of tumors with semoma bodies. They are seen in serous cis adenocarcinomas of the ovary, not in the mucinous. Meningioma, PTC, RCC, prolactinomas, they are all associated with semoma bodies. So, the answer is B. Question 107, the answer is B, that is mucinous cis adenoma ovary. We have already made the list of tumors associated with semoma bodies. This is a which calcification? Dystrophic calcification. Next, this gets us to the next question that is 108. Procalcitonin is used as a marker of sepsis. It is used as a marker of sepsis. So, this gets us, this gets us to the new markers of sepsis. This gets us to the new markers, new markers for early diagnosis, new markers for early diagnosis of sepsis, new markers for early diagnosis of sepsis. They are, they are the cell surface markers, they are the cell surface markers for neutrophils, cell surface markers for neutrophils which are CD64, CD11B, CD13, CD33. Cell surface markers for neutrophils CD64, 11B, 13, 33. Next, they are the markers for lymphocytes that is CD3, CD25, CD45 RO lymphocytes. Next, for monocytes that is HLA-DR, HLA-DR. So, the first category of new markers are the cell surface markers. The next category of markers, the next category are the acute phase proteins. Next category of markers are the acute phase proteins, which are alpha 1 antitrypsin, procalcitonin. This was what was asked alpha 1 antitrypsin, procalcitonin, serum amyloid A serum amyloid A and complement proteins and complement proteins. These are the acute phase proteins which are the early markers for sepsis. Next, the next set of markers are the cytokines. Cytokines like interleukin 2, interleukin 6, TNF alpha, and interferon gamma. Next set of markers are the cytokines that is interleukin 2, 6, TNF alpha and interferon gamma. The last are the molecular techniques. The last set of markers are the molecular techniques that is fish, fluorescent in situ hybridization. Though you must be frank, this is all the molecular techniques for sepsis is under evaluation plus it would be way too expensive for this to be practical. Fish and rRNA that is ribosomal RNA, ribosomal RNA which is written as 
RRNA, ribosomal RNA probes, RRNA probes. These are the molecular techniques for new surface markers. Done, done. So, this takes care of procalcitonin and question number 106. This gets us to the next question. This gets us to the next question that is question number 109. So, procalcitonin is a marker of sepsis. Next, 109. Which of the following is true for iron stores? Absorption of iron is increased in iron deficiency, reduced in iron overload. True, true. Normal iron is stored as hemocytrin. No, it is ferritin. Hepcidin increases iron absorption in iron. No, it does not. Hepcidin reduces the iron absorption. Transferrin is used as a storage form. Nay, no, transferrin is the it is the transport form. The storage form is ferritin. It is ferritin. So, question 109, the answer is A. Question number 109, the answer is A, that is absorption of iron, that is absorption of iron is increased in iron deficiency anemia and reduced in iron overload reduced in iron overload. This is true. So, before we go further, let us have a look at normal iron absorption. Let us have a look at normal iron absorption. What is the normal site of iron absorption? Duodenum. Duodenum. Iron, duodenum. Folic acid, jejunum. Vitamin B12, terminal ileum. So, iron, duodenum, Folic acid, folic acid, jejunum, vitamin B12, ileum, which ileum? Terminal ileum. So, iron, folic acid, B12, duodenum, jejunum, ileum. Next point, starting with normal iron absorption. Starting with normal iron absorption. If this is the duodenal cell, <coughs> if this is the duodenal cell, this is the luminal surface, lumen, this is the basolateral surface. Iron as DMT, divalent metallic ion transporter, DMT transports the ferrous form of iron into the cell. Divalent metallic ion transporter, the name tells you it is a divalent transporter, so it will transport ferrous into the cell. This ferrous is then transported to the basolateral surface by the action of ferroportin. This ferrous, it is transported to the basolateral surface by the action of ferroportin. Name tells you it is useful for porting the ferrous ion that is transport of ferrous from the cell to the basolateral surface, which is then converted to ferric which is converted to ferric by the action of hephaestin. Converted to ferric by the action of hephaestin, which is then transported bound to serum transferrin. Transported bound to serum transferrin. Next point, which is the main regulator of iron absorption? Hepcidin. This is the main regulator. Hepcidin, which is secreted by liver. Hepcidin secreted by liver. Hepcidin has a negative feedback on ferroportin. So, increased hepcidin reduces the action of ferroportin. As a result, if hepcidin increases, action of ferroportin reduces. So, increased ferrous accumulates inside the cell. This free ferrous ion is toxic, so it is converted to the storage form that is mucosal ferritin. It is converted to the storage form that is mucosal ferritin, which is lost in stools 
when the duodenal epithelium regenerates which is lost in stools when the duodenal epithelium regenerates. So, in iron deficiency hepcidin increase hepcidin reduces as a result there is more iron up uptake whereas in iron of overload hepcidin increases thus reducing the absorption of iron done. Next this gets us to the next question that is question 110 <coughs> just a sec this has gotten hanged <coughs> just give me a sec for this ok. So, now it is working again. So, this gets us to the next question that is 110 most common gene defect in idiopathic steroid resistant is NPHS 2. So, question 110 it is NPHS 2 that is option B that is option B NPHS 2 gene mutation. So, before we go further let us have a look at the two main gene mutations which are NPHS 1 and NPHS 2. NPHS 1 mutation and NPHS 2 mutations. First point more common NPHS 2. Next point NPHS 1 this is also called as Finnish type of nephrotic syndrome. Finnish type of nephrotic syndrome. Next point it is associated with abnormalities in chromosome 19 and the protein abnormality associated with this is nephrin protein abnormality associated with this is nephrin versus NPHS 2 mutations which in which the chromosomal abnormality is chromosome 1 easy to remember one digit goes off and it is associated with mutations in the protein potosin it is associated with mutations in potosin next point both NPHS 1 and NPHS 2 are steroid resistant in nature. Both NPHS 1 and NPHS 2 they are steroid resistant in nature. So, when you are asked the most common gene defect in idiopathic steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome the answer is NPHS 2 because it is more common in nature. Last point some variants of NPHS 1 last point some variants of NPHS 1 are steroid sensitive some variants are steroid sensitive as a result if you are forced to mark steroid sensitive between the two then you will mark it as NPHS 1 otherwise both NPHS 1 and NPHS 2 are steroid resistant in nature done done this finishes NPHS 1 and NPHS 2 mutations this gets us to the next question that is question 111 now which of the following markers is specific for just CD 117 this is a standard repeat question C D 117. Let us have a look at this. GIST stands for gastrointestinal stromal tumors. The fact that it is a stromal tumor means is it epithelial or mesenchymal? It is a mesenchymal tumor. It is a mesenchymal tumor. Next point, next point cell of origin the cell of origin in just is interstitial cells of kajal interstitial cells of kajal cell of origin what is the normal function normal function of interstitial cells of kajal they are the pacemaker cells pacemaker that is they control gi peristalsis they are the pacemaker cells. So, they control GI peristalsis. 
they control GI peristalsis. Next point, markers ingest. Coming to the main point, markers ingest. The most common marker, the most common is CD117 or CKIT, seen in about 95 percent of the patients most common CD117 or CKIT seen in about 95 percent of the patients. How many are left? 5 percent. So, 60 percent of remaining 5 percent, 60 percent of the remaining 5 percent, they are PDGFRA mutation positive. They are PDGFRA mutation positive. Last point, most specific, most specific marker for GIST is DOG1. DOG stands for designed for GIST 1 marker. Most specific DOG1 that is designed for GIST 1 marker. This is GIST. This is just and the most common or the most specific CD117 among the options given. See, the question was which marker is specific CD117. Though CD34 is also seen but in less percentage and is less specific than CD117. The answer would have been DOG1 only if that would have been given in the options followed by CD117. Next, question number 112. What is affected in HPS? This we already discussed yesterday plus you already know hemoglobin S if it forms what is the problem? It polymerizes on deoxygenation that is it what is affected the solubility. Question 112 the answer is D that is solubility. Why? Because HBS it polymerizes on deoxygenation. It polymerizes on deoxygenation. So, what is affected is the solubility of HBS, solubility of HBS. Next, this gets us to the next question that is question 113. Barca 1 is located on which chromosome? Extremely easy. Barca 1 chromosome 17 chromosome 17. So, let us have a look in detail, slightly in detail about Barca 1 and Barca 2. Before we go further, this gets us to the IHC, IHC classification, immunohistochemical classification of breast cancers, IHC classification of breast cancers. I can divide breast cancers into three categories which are ER positive, HER2 new negative, ER estrogen receptor, HER2 new Herceptin receptor, estrogen receptor positive, ER positive, Herceptin receptor negative, ER positive, HER2 new negative. Second category, HER2 new positive, Herceptin receptor positive and last is triple negative that is ER, PR and HER2 new negative, estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor and HER2 new negative. These are the categories of breast cancer. <coughs> Starting with the most common 1, 2, 3, <coughs> most common category 1, how common 45, 42, 55 percent, 42, 55 percent, least common category 3 less than 10 percent, least common category 3 less than 10 percent. Next point, best prognosis, the one which is most common has the best prognosis category 1, worst prognosis category 3, worst prognosis category 3. Next point, triple negative breast cancer the most common familial gene associated, 
the most common familial gene associated with this is BRCA1 present on chromosome 17 versus the most common familial gene in category 1 which is BRCA2 BRCA2 present on chromosome 13 BRCA2 present on chromosome 13 next point let us see two three more features with triple negative this was worst prognosis so it is a highly aggressive tumor highly aggressive tumor rapidly growing highly aggressive rapidly growing so so precursor lesion so the precursor lesion in this category is unknown in nature precursor lesion is unknown why because it is rapidly growing by the time it is detected the tumor has already spread we are not able to detect it early next point so it is also called as tumor of intervening mammograms it is also called as tumor of intervening mammograms today the patient has come for mammography there is no tumor when she comes the next time the tumor has already spread tumor of intervening mammograms next point next point microscopically it has medullary morphology this is triple negative breast cancer associated with BRCA1 microscopically it has medullary morphology I am not interested in telling you at all what is medullary morphology and stuff not needed just remember this medullary morphology and it is also called as basal like tumor why because it is positive for it is positive for basal or the myoepithelial cell markers it is positive for basal or myoepithelial cell markers that is basal like tumor triple negative done done next this gets us to the next question that is question 114 question 114 histological finding in Whipple's disease is Whipple's the histology has been asked at least 18 to 20 times we have numerous times discussed its microscopic appearance also so just one point histologically it shows histiocytic infiltration in lamina propria so Whipple's disease the answer is it is associated with histiocytic infiltration histiocytic infiltration in lamina propria in lamina propria let us have a look at this in slight detail so starting with Whipple's disease starting with Whipple's disease first point this disease has a diagnostic biopsy repeatedly asked so what is the microscopic feature it shows pass positive diastase resistant granules Whipple's it shows pass positive diastase resistant granules where are they seen in macrophages pass positive diastase resistant granules where in macrophages and the most common location of these macrophages is lamina propria has to be remembered has to be remembered pass positive diastase resistant granules in macrophages most common location being lamina propria last point Whipple's disease this occurs because of infection this occurs because of infection by an actinomycete this occurs because of infection by an actinomycete that is trophyrema vipulli this occurs because of infection by an actinomycete trophyrema vipulli next this gets us to the next question that is question 115 
this gets us to the next one that is 115 most common cause of chronic granulomatous disease is we have already done this chronic granulomatous disease in detail yesterday when we were discussing the nadph oxidase pathway the answer is start it is a defect in nadph oxidase we have done the test for this and everything chronic granulomatous disease chronic granulomatous disease just one point most common inheritance pattern you know this we discussed it answer x linked recessive most common inheritance for nadph oxidase pathway chronic granulomatous disease it can occur by both autosomal recessive as well as x linked recessive most common x linked recessive next this gets us to the next one that is 116 bradykinin it is responsible for extremely important and the answer is enhancing the permeability of capillaries the answer is b that is it is responsible bradykinin it is responsible for enhanced permeability of the capillaries responsible for the enhanced permeability of capillaries bradykinin so before we go further before we go further let us have a look at the various agents which are the other agents which enhance the permeability first of course is bradykinin first is bradykinin others are platelet activating factor pf complement proteins c3a and c5a i'll write the full form also platelet activating factor platelet activating factor pf complement proteins that is c3a c5a and leukotrienes that is c4 d4 e4 along with substance p along with substance p these are the factors which enhance the permeability next we are already done with pyrogens most potent interleukin 1 followed by interleukin 6 we are done with that next next vaso cons vaso uh, opsonins another important point is opsonins or opsonization agents they are c3b c3b complement factor 3b c3b fc fragment of igg c3b fc fragment of igg menos menos crp and fibrinogen menos crp and fibrinogen so these list of list of enhanced permeability and opsonization agents need to be remembered need to be remembered this again is asked this gets us to the next question that is question 117 this gets us to question number 117 which of the following or which of the organ is spared in crest syndrome before we go further crest syndrome stands for calcinosis cutis reynolds phenomena esophageal dysmotility sclerodactyly and telangiectasia crest syndrome what is spared as kidney so before let us let us write this in detail what is spared as kidney first point kidney is spared next point crest syndrome stands for calcinosis cutis reynolds phenomena reynolds phenomena esophageal dysmotility esophageal dysmotility sclerodactyly esophageal dysmotility sclerodactyly just a sec sclerodactyly and telangiectasia and telangiectasia 
yesterday we saw that crest syndrome it is seen in localized type it is more common in localized type of systemic sclerosis it is more common in localized type of systemic sclerosis first point next point in crest syndrome it is associated with conjunctival involvement it is associated with conjunctival involvement so conjunctiva shows the presence conjunctival involvement is seen conjunctival involvement is seen in systemic sclerosis it is in associated with conjunctival lungs and esophagus we have already seen esophageal dysmotility and stuff so what is not involved is kidney what is not involved is kidney next point this gets us to the next one in the lungs it is associated with pulmonary hypertension in the lungs it is associated with pulmonary hypertension so this gets us to the next question that is question 118 question 118 which of the following is characteristically associated with bone marrow fibrosis yesterday again we did the whole fab classification of aml and we saw that most common aml associated with chloromas m2 bone marrow fibrosis m7 so M7 is acute megakaryocytic leukemia. So question 118, the answer is B. That is acute megakaryocytic leukemia. M7 associated with bone marrow fibrosis. We have done this in detail yesterday. Just one point: How do we diagnose M7? Which markers? CD 41. and cd 61 you already know it is the least common aml m7 it is the least common aml but is the most common aml associated with down syndrome it is the most common aml associated with down syndrome that is m7 acute megakaryocytic leukemia we have already written this all we have already written this in the previous questions next this gets us to the next one that is question 119 this gets us to question number 119 all of the following statements about hairy cell is true except sphenomegaly is conspicuous hairy cell leukemia we have done this in detail it is associated with massive sphenomegaly in absence of lymphadenopathy next results from expansion of neoplastic t lymphocytes no not at all it is of the b lymphocytes b for bombay they are trap positive express cd25 we have seen these points in detail with hairy cell so the answer is b it is not a proliferation of t lymphocytes it is of the b lymphocytes answer is b that is results from an expansion of results from an expansion of neoplastic t cells this is the wrong statement it is not of the t lymphocytes but of the b lymphocytes next this gets us to the next question that is question number 120 this gets us to question 120 ash of cells Ashoftian cells. They are the macrophages. Macrophages or monocytes. So the answer is B. An easy one. Easy one. I guess no explanation required. You very well know Ashoft bodies. You very well know Ashoft bodies. They are the diagnostic feature. Ashoft bodies. They are the diagnostic feature of rheumatic heart disease they are the diagnostic feature of rhd rheumatic heart disease next point what are ashof bodies 
दे आर फोकल डिस्टिंगटिव एश ऑफ बॉडीज फोकल डिस्टिंगटिव इनफ्लामेटरी लीजन्स इन द हार्ट दे आर फोकल डिस्टिंगटिव इनफ्लामेटरी लीजन्स इन द हार्ट that is inflammation it is present in a localized manner it is not infiltrating into the muscle it is a distinctive inflammatory lesion so when we say an inflammatory lesion which cells are present it shows the presence of t cells t cells ashof giant cells t cells ashof giant cells and tishko cells and tishko cells also called as caterpillar cells also called as caterpillar cells so which is the hallmark feature of ashof body is it the ashof giant cell no it is the antishof cell so the pathognomonic cell the pathognomonic cell or the diagnostic feature of an ashof body is the presence of an antishko cell or caterpillar cells this you know this is easy next this gets us to the next question that is question 121 this gets us to the next one that is question 121 now see the slide and diagnosis the minute we see this i am able to make out the presence of hepatocytes let me enlarge it slightly what you have here the one i am pointing with the arrow are all the hepatocytes showing in green color large fibrotic septal tracts which is leading to the formation of nodules in the liver the image shows you everything hepatocytes which are present in nodules due to large fibrotic septal tracts the green colored are the fibrotic septal tracts making the diagnosis as cirrhosis of the liver making the diagnosis as cirrhosis of the liver cirrhosis of liver easy the microscopic image showed you everything it was liver cirrhosis it was liver cirrhosis so before we go further let us just see one statement with this what is the pathogenesis of cirrhosis why does fibrosis occur pathogenesis of cirrhosis in cirrhosis for whatever reason i'm not concerned with the reason at present for whatever reason the kaffir cells in the liver the kaffir cells that are the macrophages in liver get activated the kaffir cells in the liver get activated which in turn lead to release of cytokines and chemokines which in turn leads to the release of cytokines and chemokines which activates stellate cells which activates stellate cells stellate cells they are also called as ito cells so when the kaffir cells get activated it leads to the release of cytokines and chemokines which activates stellate cells stellate cells they are also called as ito cells so first point what is the normal function of stellate cells their normal function is storage of vitamin a normal function storage of vitamin a what is the normal location of stellate cells normal location they are present in space of disse space of disse now space of disse this is just a technicality it is the space between hepatocytes and endothelium of sinusoids this space is called as space of disse now when the stellate cells become activated they become fibroblastic in nature they become fibroblastic in nature leading to the deposition of leading to the deposition of 
कोर्स कोलाजन इन प्लेस ऑफ फाइन कोलाजन लीडिंग टू द डिपोजिशन ऑफ कोर्स कोलाजन इन प्लेस ऑफ फाइन कोलाजन वट डू वी मीन बाई दिस वट डू वी मीन बाई दिस इन लिवर वट इज कोर्स कोलाजन दिस इज जनरल वट इज कोर्स कोलाजन टाइप वन एंड टाइप थ्री कोलाजन वट इज फाइन कोलाजन द वन विच इज प्रेजेंट इन बेसमेंट मेम्रेन्स दैट इज टाइप फोर कोलाजन वट इज देयर नॉर्मल लोकेशन इन लिवर कोर्स कोलाजन इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द बिगर एरियाज दैट इज अराउंड पोर्टल ट्रैक्ट्स एंड सेंट्रल वेन वेयर एज फाइन कोलाजन is present in space of disse fine collagen is present in space of disse so what happens in cirrhosis is deposition of coarse collagen that is deposition of type 1 and type 3 collagen in place of fine collagen that is in the space of disse this is cirrhosis this is cirrhosis next this gets us to the next question that is question 122 so what we saw in the previous question the image was the formation of fibrotic septal tracts formation of fibrotic septal tracts next this gets us to the next one that is question 122 in digoid syndrome we have already seen digoid syndrome that was absence of t cells was it a inherited mutation no it was because of pharyngeal pouch defects absence of t cells is a result of direct failure of which embryonic structure the third pharyngeal pouch 122 the answer is a that is third pharyngeal pouch this we have written everything with respect to digoids as such the third pharyngeal pouch this is responsible for formation of thymus it forms the thymus and inferior parathyroid glands it forms thymus and inferior parathyroid glands this you know well from embryology this you know from embryology the third pharyngeal pouch forms the thymus and inferior parathyroid glands as a result of which digoids is absence of thymus the, the the pharyngeal pouch abnormalities in turn third pharyngeal pouch next point next point F just for the completion sake let us write the structures which arise from various pouches starting with the first pouch do this is more of anatomy or embryology and uh, anatomist will be able to teach you this much well but we are just writing point wise the structures associated the first pharyngeal pouch it it is associated with the formation of auditory tube auditory tube next distal portion distal portion tympanic cavity the distal portion will form the tympanic cavity tympanic cavity whereas the proximal portion of the first pouch the proximal portion will become the auditory tube proximal portion becomes the auditory tube first pouch next is the second pouch second pouch so first pouch next is second pouch this forms palatine this forms the palatine tonsils first pouch the second pouch next is the third pouch we have already seen this it forms thymus and inferior parathyroid glands thymus and inferior parathyroid glands versus the fourth pouch which forms the superior parathyroid glands easy to remember this is opposite of each other third is inferior fourth is superior last is the fifth pouch which leads to the formation of 
ultimo branchial body which leads to the formation of ultimo branchial body these are the pharyngeal pouches not concerned what i am primarily concerned with is third pouch digeorge syndrome next next this gets us to the next question that is question 123 this gets us to the next one that is 123 now 65 male chronic smoker hyler mass 65 male chronic smoker hyler mass i do not need anything else i am thinking in terms of small cell carcinoma lung recurrent hypoglycemic spells that means that he is it is also associated with paraneoplastic syndrome which will most commonly be associated with this that is small cell tumor question 123 d it is most commonly associated with small cell tumors small cell tumors so before we go further let us see two three points with respect to this most common lung malignancy most common lung malignancy metastasis it is not a primary it is metastasis what is the most common site of metastasis what is the most common site of primary in adults in adults primary is most commonly from breast cancer that is breast cancer metastasizing to the lung that's the most primary now kids do not have breast cancer so which is the most common site of primary in children osteosarcoma osteosarcoma next point next point most common primary lung malignancy in most common so most common lung malignancy was metastasis most common primary lung malignancy in india is squamous cell carcinoma in india is squamous cell carcinoma versus west where it is adenocarcinoma most common primary lung malignancy <coughs> suppose in the paper india or west is not written what will you mark indian data or western data indian data because you are giving the indian paper next point strongest association with smoking next point strongest association with smoking small cell carcinoma strongest association with smoking small cell carcinoma followed by squamous cell carcinoma small cell followed by squamous cell carcinoma next point most common lung malignancy in smokers see the difference in the question strongest association with smoking is small cell but most common in smokers now squamous cell carcinoma is so common that even though it is less specific but it is the most common lung malignancy in smokers squamous cell carcinoma so see the difference in the question strongest association small cell most common in smokers squamous cell next point next point so i can safely say females and non smokers i can safely say females and non smokers adenocarcinoma females and non smokers adenocarcinoma last point most common lung malignancy most common lung malignancy associated with paraneoplastic syndromes most common lung malignancy associated with paraneoplastic syndromes that is small cell carcinoma lung most common lung malignancy with paraneoplastic syndromes small cell carcinoma lung so in the question you had a chronic smoker with paraneoplastic syndrome that is small cell carcinoma lung next this gets us to the next question that is question 124 this gets us to question 
grape like polypoid bulky mass protruding through vagina this is the classical presentation grape like vagina children that is sarcoma sarcoma botryoids so question 124 the answer is b that is sarcoma botryoids sarcoma botryoids by who i d e s sarcoma botryoids so what do we mean by this what do we mean by this this is a type of sarcoma botryoids this is a type of embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma this is a type of embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma type of embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma seen in pediatric population seen in pediatric population what do we mean by pediatric population that is from birth to 15 years of age it is a type of embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma seen in pediatric population next point next point grossly grossly these have polypoid grossly these have polypoid or grape like lesions beneath the mucosa grape like lesions below mucosa that is sarcoma botryoids it is a type of embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma last point last point locations associated where do they occur vagina cervix urinary bladder vagina cervix urinary bladder and nasopharynx these are the locations see now this takes care of question 124 124 this gets us this gets us to the next one that is question 125 this gets us to the next one that is 125 most common fixative used in pathology is formaldehyde the answer is c that is formaldehyde easy so this gets us to the master list of fixatives used in pathology this gets us to the fixatives used in pathology the most common is formaldehyde this we have already seen what percentage formaldehyde 10% 10% next point electron microscopy we use glutaraldehyde electron microscopy glutaraldehyde next point next gi biopsies gi biopsies boins solution gi biopsies boin solution testicular biopsy testicular biopsy boin holland solution testicular biopsy boin holland solution easy to remember if you do a testicular biopsy the person is howling in pain boin holland solution just a way to remember next point bone marrow biopsy zinker's fluid bone marrow biopsy zinker's fluid and lastly pap smears pap smears we use alcohol with what percentage 95% ethyl alcohol 95% ethyl alcohol done so this list of fixatives to be used in pathology needs to be remembered done this takes care of question 125 thank you